Hey guys, welcome back. Today we are going to do another canning episode with the jalapeno peppers. We're going to be canning some hot and spicy, sweet and spicy um, relish. It's a pepper relish. So I'm going to show you how to do that with jalapenos and can it so you can utilize them later. You get an overabundance and bumper crop, you need to have something to do with them so that they don't go to waste. So let's dive in. So the first step, guys, is you need one pound of the hot peppers that you're going to use. Um, I'm using jalapenos. You can use other types of peppers if you'd like. you got to put them into the chopper because you don't want them large. You're doing a relish. So you're just going to throw them in the chopper. You could de-seed them, guys. I don't feel like dealing with all that. I'm just going to deal with seeds in my relish. Um, you could de-seed them. It's too much work on my end. We're just going to throw those in there and then we're going to chop those up. Um, again, it's one pound of the hot pepper. So we're going to chop these up and we'll be back. Next, you need basically two small sweet peppers. Um, I've got mini bells, so we're just doing the mini bells. So, got a couple of those. I have what I basically would put off as being what two small peppers would be equivalent to. While you're doing this, you could start heating and sterilizing your jars that you're going to use. So that way those are ready to go. And then you need one medium onion. Well, one medium, like half an onion, technically, not medium. It's just one half an onion. So, I'm going to throw that in there. And dice those up. Now we are to the spices, basically, or the powders and liquids and all that fun stuff. So, we need one and a fourth of a cup of sugar. Did I mention that canning uses a lot of sugar? Three fourths of a cup of apple cider vinegar. and one and a half teaspoons of canning salt. Use canning salt, guys, or at least kosher salt. You do not want to use iodine salt for canning. So one and a half teaspoons of canning salt, which this is a half teaspoon here. Now we're going to put this on the stove and heat it up, and it'll be about 20 minutes. You're working on thickening it up before it goes in the canning jars. So about 20 minutes on the stove, just at a simmer, basically, heating it up and reducing the liquid. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Once it's pretty much at a thickened consistency, like this is pretty thick now. It's still got some liquid, but it's really not bad. You can put it into your warm jars that you have been warming up the whole time. So you're going to take this and you're going to ladle it into your warm jars, leaving about a half inch of head space. Make sure your jars are warm because you're putting the hot liquid in. You don't want to crack your jars. And you're going to be putting it right back into a hot canner. Now using your wide mouth funnel, you're going to ladle your mixture in. Thank you. 
So once they're all filled up, you're going to get the air bubbles out. These most definitely could have been filled up just a little bit more, but... Okay. And then if you have to, you can clean your tops. Um, I did not get anything on them. I'm just double checking them now, but there's nothing there. So no need for that. And you're going to take your clean lids. They don't necessarily have to be boiled. Um, by ball standards now, they no longer need to be boiled before using them. They just have to be cleaned. So you take your clean lids and put them on. And then your rings finger tight. And finger tighten your rings down. Make sure they're out straight too, because that one is not. Finger tight basically means you tighten until it stops turning willingly. Um, not cranking it down. Okay, now I think it's straight. So once it kind of basically stops turning, that's when it's tight enough. Many people turn it too tight, and then the air doesn't escape so easily. These rings on just basically finger tight. So when you're putting them on, tight, tight, tight. See how it's just, it's turning on its own without, that's when it's resisting, that's when it stops. I sometimes will grab and do one little tiny turn, but that's as much as you need to do. Now they're ready to go inside the canner. So you're going to drop those jars into the canner. Um, make sure there's about two inches of water above the lids once they're in there. And you're going to bring it back up to a boil. Once it is boiling, you're water bathing it for 15 minutes at a rolling boil. And then you let it sit for five minutes turned off before you remove the jars. Once you remove those jars, you're going to remove the band. You don't want to leave the band down for storage because it can prematurely cause your seal to break. But also, if by chance you have a false seal, it can unseal. And with the band still on there, it's pushing it up against there again, or against the glass again. So it could reseal if given the right opportunities. So you could end up having something that's got bacteria within it from unsealing, but it's been resealed so you would never know. So take that band off. You want to store it with no band. You're, you're panning it to create a vacuum seal. It's not the band that's holding that lid on. It is the vacuum seal. So once you're, it's out, you're going to check. Make sure that middle is not up. Make sure it's not making a sound. And then you want to make sure you can pick up the jar by the lid. If you can pick it up by that lid and it doesn't come off, it's not loose, it's got a good seal. You can now put it on your shelf and it is good for at least a year and a half according to ball standards um, if you're using ball lids. I'm not using ball lids, but they're good for at least a year um, to eat. It will degrade over time the longer it sits on a shelf, but you've got at least a year of good fresh food that's going to be healthy and still retain the same freshness. Happy canning, guys. Hope you learned something, and we'll catch you on the next one.